Hello everyone and welcome to another video review. What I have for you on the counter is the CZ75 SPO1. This is the manual safety version. This is going to be my 500 round review. I figured this was necessary to do because the slide and the controls were super stiff when I got it right out of the box. Compared to the CZ75B, that was not the case with that pistol, but this one, the controls were way stiffer. On the last round, when the magazine would hold the slide to the rear position, and you go to insert the next magazine, and you would use the slide to try and rechamber the next round, well, the slide was super stiff, and it, it wouldn't go into battery, and I had to hit it with my hand. And so, over time, it broke in, and now it works just fine. But originally, I had to use the slide lever stop. So I figured this would be a good chance to go over the progress of breaking it in and also do a thousand round review because it's still not as broken in as I think it's going to be. I just think that it's big, heavy, and it's kind of stiff. Compared to the CZ75B, there was no real break in period, but there definitely was for this one. And I noticed on YouTube, there's not a lot of videos on this particular model or a lot on the CZ stuff. So I figured spread it out to the universe. So let's go over the specs real quick. 4.6 inch barrel. This is a beast. It weighs 40 ounces with the empty 19 round magazine as shown. It has an ambi safety. It has an enhanced slide stop lever. It has enhanced magazine release. It has a tactical rail. It has front and rear slide serrations. The front slide serrations are flat and the rear ones are curved. The sights, it has a fiber optic front sight and two white dot sight in the rear. And it has the hammer here and the little more extended beaver tail than the 75B. And the grips here are rubber and not plastic. So that is the specs. So now we'll go over the finer details. When I took this pistol to the range for the first time and used it, when the slide locked to the rear position and I went to change the magazines, I couldn't get it to go back into battery using the slide. So when it was locked in the rear position, you put in the new magazine, right? And then you pull back on the slide and you want it to release. Well, it wasn't working and I kept doing it over and over again. And then finally I just hit it forward. I used the slide lever stop the next few times. And then I noticed throughout the course of using it through the range sessions, it finally broke in but originally it didn't want to work at all. And so I would take the magazine out and I would take the bullet out and then I would try and shuffle the bullets in the magazine to see if it was some kind of an issue with the ammo. But I just think that the slide needed to be broken in. I noticed that the recoil system is also a little bit different here in this one than in the 75B2. But this one is also heavier, so I think that the weight on the spring is different also. Now, the guide rod is a little bit longer in this one too. It's long and skinny. And in the 75B, it's like in a GI 1911 where it's just a short little stub. So this pistol, I noticed there's definitely a breaking into it, whereas the 75B, there was no breaking in at all. This one, the trigger, there's no breaking in, but definitely the controls and the slide are super stiff right out of the box. Now I've only have about 500 rounds into it. So we'll see at a thousand if it's even more broken in. I still really like it, but I noticed that the controls, that was kind of weird because I had no issue with that with the 75B at all. But with this one, I noticed right away, I thought that was weird. And it wasn't the magazines because you can use the 16 round CZ75B magazines for this also. So I used those for this too at the range and it was the same thing. So there was definitely a breaking in of the slide. I also noticed that the controls are super stiff. The safety, even though you can hear the audible click and it doesn't look like I'm using a lot of pressure, if you were to see the CZ75B and hold it in your hand, you would notice that you just need barely any pressure and it goes up 
and a little bit to go down. Here you notice that it's definitely more stiff. I even have lubricated on the inside and done this a whole bunch of times to get it to try and break in. And I've done it probably a couple hundred times to be honest because it was super stiff right out of the box. Now the slide lever stop, I actually had to use it because I couldn't get the slide to go into battery originally until it got broken in. And I was using 124 grain ammo for this. I don't think I've ever used 115. I think I've only used 124 in this. So I know that in the 75B, I used 115 grain. Oh wait, no, I did use the 115 in this. I, I used the same ammo in both of these. So I know that they can eat any ammo, no problem, because I never had any malfunctions. But this one has had a majority of 124 grain. I just remember I used some of that 115 with the 75B to do a comparison on the accuracy. So I used the same ammo. So I know that there's no problems with the ammo 115 or 124. I also noticed that the uh, grip is a little bit more comfortable than the plastic one. The little uh, hump here and the rubber grip I like a little bit more than the plastic one. So this one does have a little bit more advantages. Um, the weight being five ounces heavier, I think that it makes it easier to have your target with follow-up shots. You'll see from the target that I have here that you can stack the rounds pretty easily. So once you have your target acquired, the follow-up shot, super easy. I've never used the double action trigger because it has the manual safety. So in single action, it's pretty nice. It takes some getting used to compared to like the striker fired pistols. And the grip on it is nice and it's an all metal pistol, but it's still not the same as like a 1911. And the way that the bore axis with the slide is, the slide is hard to manipulate. Um, it is the downside, I would say, of the CZ-75 line of pistols is this thin slide here. It makes it hard to manipulate the slide, but I was using it yesterday to do press checks and it was doing just fine. And I was able to use the slide to release into battery, no problem. Didn't have to use the slide lever stop. Now I did have my instructor from the concealed carry class that I say that they don't recommend using the slide lever stop because eventually it can break it. Now, if you look inside where the barrel is, it has this like hole where it, it moves back and forth in the barrel, kind of like a 1911 too, also where the slide lever stop goes through part of the barrel. So it does have some 1911 slash Browning high power design to it but it's a little bit, I would say, more simplified because there's no thing to take out of the way and the spring doesn't come out of here. So it is a little bit easier to take down and clean. Um, no problems with it whatsoever. The sights, I have no problem with because of the front fiber optic sight. The rear ones kind of don't matter when you have one of these nice fiber optic front sights. If these were blacked out, I mean, I'd be okay with that because they say these are white sights. If they're white, I mean, I don't know what they call white, but you can barely see them anyway. So eventually I wanna replace the rear sight in this, but I may just get night sights and I may f use this fiber optic sight on the 75B. Uh, I think you can flip them around, but I've been eyeing different sights and different grips for it because although these rubber grips are serviceable, I think with either the G10 or some wood grips be better. I noticed that the texturing here and in here is a nice touch. It's not too much, it's not too little. I have the uh, Emissary 1911 that has the super aggressive tick grip texturing. It takes a little bit getting used to. But what I like about this is this big flat area here. So if you look at the 75B, it, 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 the way that it's cut and designed, that where you put your left thumb is kind of weird, but here it has this big space for you to put your thumb or your support hand. So I really like this pistol because you have a lot of control with it, not only because of the nice single action trigger and it weighs 40 ounces unloaded. So loaded, it weighs three pounds or more probably. 
depending on, you know, what load you're using. And you can use 16 round magazines. And I think there are some 15 one round ones that will work for it too, for other previous models of the CZ 75 series. So there also is the Italian ones that you can get the Mechar ones that should work pretty good for it because the CZ brand ones are super expensive, but they are really nice. So these 19 round magazines that this and the 75 SPO one shadow come with are really nice. They're high quality. They also will work for the 75 B. They look really great in it also. So it's good because they're interchangeable. I'm after the SPO one shadow next, which is the competition version of this, which is going to have a little bit different controls. The safety will be different. It won't have the firing pin block here. It's supposed to smooth out the trigger. The sighting system will be the same. It'll see, it'll still be a double single action trigger, but it's supposed to be a nicer one. And I didn't want to get the shadow too, because this is heavy enough at 40 ounces, as you see here, fully loaded 19 rounds, nine millimeter. It's going to be three pounds. So I already have enough weight to mitigate the recoil. And even with the 75 B it's plenty of weight. So with this, it just has even more added capability. So if you put a light on here, that's even more weight. So this is a really capable piece and the weight mitigates any and all recoil and follow-up shots are easy to stack on top of each other. So I did use it at the range yesterday and I did do a comparison also with uh, the 1911 platform that a video that I'm going to be making. So I kept the targets because I used the CZ75 and the 1911 on the same day. And I've been doing that for like two months now and uh, trying to get a feel for what platform I like better. They have that new Dan Wesson DWX that's like a hybrid 1911 with the CZ75. It's got the 1911 trigger, but the CZ75 design. It still has the same locking channels and the slide milled for the barrel to fit in. So I really like learning about the different designs, whatnot, and see how they work out. That's an expensive pistol, and the uh, SPO1 Shadow is pretty spendy too, but it'll be under a thousand, where that DWX will be over a thousand. So that's something to look forward to in the future here coming up shortly. I'm looking forward to breaking this in and I'm going to do a thousand round review also. Now I'm going to get the target and go over um, the distance and the accuracy, so on and so forth. Here's my target from yesterday's range session. I was using 124 grain brass cased full metal jacket, brand new. This target was at 35 feet. I also use my 1911s with the same target at the same distance, but it's in 45. So I'm kind of doing a comparison of platforms in the future, but I really like the CZ75 platform. It's highly accurate right out of the box. This is more accurate than my Glock pistols or my SIG pistols for sure. I still am learning how to use this best, where to put my hands, um, where to put my finger on the trigger. The single action trigger is nice, but the pistol is really big and heavy and I have small hands. So I have to kind of manipulate my grip a little and I'm still kind of searching where to best put my index finger on the trigger and how to have the best muscle memory with the single action trigger. Cause I don't have anything else that's double single action other than the CZ 75 pistols and don't have any experience with that platform previous to this. The 1911 trigger is nicer than this, I'll just say, but there's nothing wrong with this nice single action trigger. I've never used the double action because this is the version with the manual safety, not the tactical model with the decocker. But uh, as far as single action goes, really easy to use. It doesn't take a lot and it's really nice to have a light trigger pull with your follow-up shots. As you can see, I was able to stack them on top of each other and in the middle here I almost got all of the target. Uh, as you can see there's just a little bit left. So I also was getting some to go right through that hole too because that was the goal is I was just missing two. So there should be I think what 50, 
1938 54 rounds in here but if i count the holes there's not 54 holes because there's bullets that went into the hole where there's already a hole also so this is a highly accurate pistol and i think they're really underrated platform cz as a whole the p01 the cz 75b these are nice pistols right out of the box for the money and I was looking on the website and it looks like they lowered the MSRP price for this. It says it was 800. When I previously made a video on it, it said it was 949. So maybe they're having a sale on these. So maybe check the interwebs, look by the SKU number. So you make sure you get the version with the manual safety or if you want the version with the decocker, pay attention to the SKU number because the pictures on the websites aren't always accurate. So learn to go by the SKU number. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this content, consider subscribing. Uh, stay tuned for more CZ content, and I'll catch you on the next video.